Why was Richard Carapaz furious with Sergio Aguita during today's stage? This was the 20th stage of the Vuelta a España, finishing on the Puerto de Navacerrada, but it's actually a six kilometer plateau up and down at the end of the final climb, most of which are shallow gradients. There was the second last climb, about 9k, 7.5%, where if Enric Mas wanted to try something, that would have to be the place to do it. The last climb was far too easy, and he had about a two-minute gap uh, behind Avon Pole. Breakaway initially went, but then Carapaz, Menkes, and Aguida were trying to get in it. More riders were trying to get in. Maida, Caicedo, Mulberger, Quickstep were monitoring. They brought back the Carapaz first move. Then another one went with Jan Palance, Hugh Carthy, Aguita, Carapaz this time. This was more successful with Hesink, who was unlucky the other day, but had Menkes in it. So Bora Hansgrohe, to protect Jai Hindley's 10th on GC, started pacing in the peloton. And just remind you of all the groups, that's the Carapaz group, about three and a half minutes ahead. Then there's another counter move of Maida, Pino, and Mulberger. And then ahead of the race is Rob Stannard and Mark Soler, who went clear. So many groups up the road, tough day for the producers. This breakaway just got re-attacked by Carapaz and Aguita and Menkes over and over and over again. They bridged the front move and Bora keeping the gap pretty tight for Hindley and we're coming up to that second last climb and Movistar rightly are trying a last ditch attack Rojas then Oliveira here Rodriguez after that crash the other day already sliding back Menkes goes clear with Aguita and Carapaz again Carapaz also going for KOM points dropping the Bala group but why won't Sergio Aguita pull? It's because he's on Bora Hansgrohe and Menkes is virtually or close to at this point overtaking Hindley on GC, so he's not pulling with Menkes. He's just sitting in so that, yeah, Menkes doesn't gain a lead, and that's not going to endear him to Carapaz or uh, Menkes too much, especially when Enric Mas attacks, and there's a lot of pressure from the GC group behind, so Carapaz stage win is under threat. Mas goes, but again, it's just, it's too hard to drop uh, even a pole on a stage like this is not that difficult to parkour. Almeida comes back. Aronsman had good legs. Maybe fix the power meter. He was making top four, top five selection over and over on these climbs. Soler drops back from the breakaway. So now all the riders from that big break start dropping back. Uh, Lopez paces Almeida back to the group. Aronsman attacks. And he's like seven and a half minutes back on GC. So he's probably wondering why even if I was marking him, he maybe got a tad unlucky there. So Lair then tries to spring Ayuso, but he's got to gain like two and a half minutes on Mars. So not too many changes or at all in the top five. Carapaz attacks in the feed zone, or maybe just trying to make sure he gets the max KOM points. He's got that competition sewn up. And then Polaris drops back. So there are riders for UAE to pace. Ayuso's very fast in a flat sprint. So he'd be the favorite from that group against even maybe a tired Aguita. Mulberger drops back. It's the gap is at two minutes, 24 Ks to go. But in the valley below, despite Aguita still not pulling, at this point with the duo, and the breakaway at 30 seconds, the other break behind with Hersink and, and Valverde, this group stops. They don't put Polans on the front straight away. Soler's coming back. Rodriguez, who Almeida's virtually ahead of on GC, moving from 6th to 5th right now, is coming back as well. And yet UAE don't start pulling immediately. So that gap stays at 2 minutes. It goes out even more. And with how tight, you see it's now at 2.30, how tight the finish was when Rodriguez comes back, that was the end. Well, not the end, but that made it more difficult for the Peloton and Ayuso to win this stage. So they get to the final climb. Aguita still not working. Carapaz had a up. He attacks, wants to get away from Menkes, and if Aguita bridges across to him, it's fine. He gaps 120 on this climb, and here Aguita does bridge across. And he's had to do a big effort to do so, but Carapaz is so fed up after the whole day of Aguita sitting in that he shouts at him immediately as he's bridged across to start pulling on the front. I think you can't see he's not front on. I think he's talking to him, and then he shrugs his shoulders angrily as he gets out of the saddle, and Aguita does go to the front after Carapaz remonstrates with him, and that's going to be crucial with Polance pacing. The gap was still stable at 120, but Carapaz was using Aguita a lot. Bala starts to put 10 seconds into it before Miguel Angel Lopez attacks. That takes 20 seconds out on this 10k 5% climb where a draft is important. So without Aguita pulling on this climb, Carapaz had no chance to win this stage, particularly when Almeida does start to pull. I don't know whether this is for the Ayuso stage win 
or because he wants to keep Rodriguez behind to move into fifth. Either way, it puts Carapaz and Aguita into more jeopardy. 20 seconds with 2Ks left on the climb. 16. Still Carapaz sitting in for the most part. When Lopez attacks again, he brings this down to single digits. Seven seconds at this point. And I was thinking Aguita should stop. He should stop pacing. Trust his sprint from the GC group. Just sit in and recover. But he doesn't. He has one last ditch pull. The group is just behind. Carapaz, you see in the drops, you know what he's about to do. The camera, though, cuts away to the GC group, which is paced by Almeida eight seconds back, and Carapaz has hit Igita. This is what he does at every single stage. It's perfect tactics in the break from Carapaz. His strike rate is phenomenal. He's already won two stages in the world that he uses or maximizes his companions in a breakaway, even risking being caught for that one big attack he takes it back out to 25 seconds he's pacing against Almeida who stops even though Aaronsman's threatening his GC position and he puts Ayuso on the front who's in third and Aaronsman's trying to I mean Almeida's in virtual fifth now it doesn't really make sense to me and Ayuso I thought they'd be going for him in the stage win I guess they were 20 seconds back with 2k's to go so maybe they knew they weren't catching Carapaz, who was flying. He won on Sierra de la Pandera ahead of Lopez and Roglic and Mas, I think, by eight seconds. And again today, he wins by a slender margin, eight seconds. Magnificent win, his third in this Vuelta, ahead of Timon Aronsman and Ayuso winning the bunch sprint, what could have been a stage win for third. But Remco Evenepoel, without any troubles today, he benefited from the fight around him between all the other GC contenders, and he, barring disaster tomorrow, wins the Vuelta at the first time of asking. Carapaz winning the stage ahead of Aronsman, Ayuso, Hindley, Marseille, Evenepoel, Minkies, Lopez, Almeida, then a gap to Iquita in 10th. Here's what Evenepoel had to say after the stage. I don't know what's going on. Uh through my head and my body right now it's it's amazing uh all all the, the the critics i got all the you know all the bad comments since uh for last year i think i uh, i finally delivered and i can i answer to everybody with my pedals and uh i mean i've been working so hard to come here in the best shape as possible and to now win to now win this world is, is just, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It's actually my first Grand Tour starting healthy, so uh, I'm really happy to, to be the first guy to win a, a, a Grand Tour for Patrick as a CEO and uh, again for Belgium, just for my country and for my teammates, you know. And in terms of GC, there were a few changes in the top 10. Menke's maybe got a little bit unlucky that Bora aggressively defended 10th, but that is what it is. Evenepoel, 205 ahead of Mars, 508 ahead of Ayuso. Almeida moves into fifth. Rodriguez now one second behind Aronsman, who moves into sixth. I'd like to see him go for the intermediate sprint tomorrow. Full lead out. Until the recap of that tomorrow, ciao.